Red rock is an alteration facies that's pretty commonly associated with IOCG copper deposits. You also see it associated with some porphyry systems, but it's most common in those big iron rich IOCG systems. There's a good example of it in this rock here, so let's take a closer look. In this case, it's halos surrounding veins, and that makes it a little bit easier to understand how it develops, rather than just a big pervasive area where everything's turned red. Now this rock was originally a layered carbonate sediment. It's been metamorphosed to a calxilicate. You can still see some of the bedding going in this direction here. And originally it would have been a, a green gray rock with alternating layers there with more or less calcium feldspar in it. And the green color is actinolite in this case. But then along come some albite veins cutting through the bedding at almost right angles there. And they've got this bright orange halo around them. And that halo is mostly a result of the feldspars having very finely divided hematite spread all throughout the feldspars. In some cases it involves a little bit of albite addition or alteration of other minerals to albite, but mostly it's just coloration of the feldspars. And because they tend to be this bright orange color like this, it's often mistaken for K feldspar. But in most of these systems, Sodium is by far the most abundant cation, and when you make a thin section of that and stain it, you'll find most of it's albite. And it's certainly albite in these veins here. You can see the sort of pale cream color there. Sometimes it's really magnetic. Sometimes you have a lot of finely disseminated magnetite associated with it. Sometimes it's just completely unmagnetic, as is the case here. But the key thing is this bright orange color, and particularly in feldspars that shouldn't otherwise be orange, albite for example. When you see it like this, where it's a halo around a vein, that's pretty easy to see that it's alteration, but in a lot of these systems you just get enormous areas where it's, everything is turned orange, and it might look like the original colour until you see an outcrop like this. Now I've broken open a piece here so you can see what it looks like inside, and I'll just put a bit of water on that. So here you can see the original grey-green colour of the host rock, the calxilicates, and here's that bright orange staining, staining most of the feldspars, but the dark grey-green colour of the actinolite is preserved, but all the feldspars are turned bright orange. Here you can see some of that bright orange feldspar, there's actinolite from the original calxilicate rock, but it's recrystallised a bit coarser grained, and there's a few remnant bits of carbonate there. Those white things are carbonate. Here's an example of red rock alteration that's really strong and it's got some of that secondary magnetite on top of it. Let's just break off a piece and have a closer look. So I'll just put a bit of water on this face here. So there you can see the, the bedding in the original calxilicate rock. As I said, calxilicates are particularly susceptible to red rock alteration. The feldspathic layers have all gone bright red. And the grey layers that used to be bands of actinolite are now bands of magnetite. The iron from the actinolite has been converted into iron oxide and now it's magnetite. You'll see it just grabs those layers with the magnetite and there's a bit of magnetite even in the feldspathic layers. So when you see a lot of magnetite along with the red rock alteration you know you're getting towards a higher temperature part of the system and generally speaking that's a better place to be. Although you still want that overprint that has the sulphide event that's usually retrograde with respect to this fluid. So mapping red rock alteration in IOCG systems is useful because it often forms a big envelope around the system. That'll give you some idea of the scale of the system you're working with. And after that, if you can find the zone that has the really intense red rock alteration and the magnetite overprint, that'll tell you where the high temperature, really iron rich fluids were, and that's usually the core of the system. 
And while that event doesn't usually precipitate the mineralization, it often uses the same plumbing system, so you'll be roughly in the same place. Beyond that, you just have to look for the retrograde events that have carbonate, actinolite, albite, and sometimes chlorite, and of course, sulfide. That's where the ore will be.